Now, I am lucky. Um, I'm just very cognizant of the fact that there are people out there with atrial fibrillation or, you know, with different heart disorders and um, they can't get up and walk up hills. You know, they can't get up every morning and go to work. I know there's mornings I can't go, you know, it's like, oh, do I really have to go? But I go. But there are people who physically can't get out there and even with this condition but I actually went private to a consultant up in the cardiac unit up in Galway Clinic um, Just I just paid that out of my own back pocket just to try and get on a list somewhere so I was six months battling to get onto somebody's list and eventually I did I was told in one of my appointments and I, I went, ended up going to a um, cardiac consultant in the matter that, and he thought I was on private and he said what date in two weeks time will suit you and to this day, that still, still, sorry, still upsets me. Sorry. It's all right. Yeah, because, you know, I, I won't deny anybody their own health care, but I have to look after my own. And, you know, there are only so many people in this country that do this procedure. It's only done in the matter, this procedure. There's only a few EPs, electro, electrophysiologists that do it. And um, if somebody goes through their private section, that puts me back on the list again, you know. It, it takes away my operating time. Now, I have to be selfish about it as well. I have to be, as I say, that word, more proactive about it. We'll have to just pretend you're in government just for the sake of argument. What are you going to, to do to address this problem? Yeah, I mean, I suppose the problem is that it hasn't been addressed for the last eight years and that there's a backlog there. Um, you know, it's, we're not going to have a situation where people are not going to buy health insurance anymore. That's just, you know, that's not going to happen. But the problem with the, the surgery that Celine is waiting for and the other 153,000 on the outpatient waiting list is that if, if you're very sick in this country, so if you need cancer treatment, you will be seen, you know, very, very quickly. It is people that it, essentially that you're not going to die from what you need, but your quality of life is drastically reduced. So people waiting for a hip operation for two years, if you get to a stage where your GP is recommending a hip operation, it means you're already in pain. You know, you're already struggling to walk and get around. Uh, waiting two years in pain is it's cruel it is just cruel there's no other way of putting it I could see you get upset there Celine is that is that frustration oh it is oh definitely um, as I said I do my best try not to get stressed about it and keep the happy face but when you talk about it and when you hear that I could get this done in two weeks time and I can't that's really frustrating that's it's really actually annoying and if I could curse I would it is really really <laughs> annoying um, that you just can't get the care that should be there for you, that is there for you, but you just can't reach it. Clearly, it's been that the health system is being mismanaged and that the money isn't getting to where it needs to go. Uh, and I mean, that is the job of the Minister for Health. You know, I mean, the Minister for Health, yes, okay, he's one individual. He has a huge team at his disposal. He's got his own private team in his, in his own office, but he's an entire Department of Health, our top level civil servants at his disposal to look at this. You know, and he's had a number of years in the brief and nothing's changed, nothing's getting better. Celine, do you see the Minister for Health as being ultimately responsible? It's his job to ensure that the health service is running at its optimum pace and um, it's not.